Hello folks on this lovely evening, we just want to speak to you about our next little uh, episode and uh, the question this time is what is grace? What is grace? Well put simply, you know, there are, there's one way of putting it simply. Basically grace is the unmerited favour of God. In other words, you and I don't merit anything from God at all, certainly not his favour. But he does bring to us hope and blessing. One way we used to do it with the children was just to put the word grace as an acrostic. G-R-A-C-E. G. God's riches at Christ's expense. And that really tells the story simply of what grace is. But the little verse that we're going to read together, it's found in Second Corinthians. And it's... Uh, it's a lovely little verse, and it's uh, chapter 8 and verse 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, and here's what it says. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And so the word of God really answers the question, what is grace for us? It tells us, uh, these lovely words uh, from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. But there are one or two questions we need to ask ourselves in relation to this term, grace. If it's the unmerited favour of God, who provided the grace? Well, again, the answer is given to us. Who needed the grace? And how much did grace did we need? And finally, how much grace did he give? Well, very simply, the first question is, who was it who provided or provides the grace that we need? Well, Paul writes in, in, and reminds us of this in the book of Romans, um, and he talks about the free gift of God, and he, um, he talks about the grace of God as a free gift, uh, and it comes by Jesus Christ. Uh, and so the answer, again, is given in Scripture, that the grace that we require, this unmerited favour, comes from God himself. And that's a remarkable thing as we consider that together, that the God of high heaven, the righteous God, the holy God, should be interested sufficiently in the people of this world uh, to provide his favour for us and to provide his son for us. And the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, is that uh, person who brought the grace of God into the world. Uh, and John writes in his gospel and he says this, for the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so the grace that we require um, is provided by God. You know our little verse also uh, reminds us who needs the grace um, and we, we read it together don't we? Um, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich for your sakes he became poor uh, and so our verse gives us the answer to who is it that needs the grace well God wouldn't have given grace to people who didn't need it um, and, and so he gives us grace he gives it to you and I he shows his grace towards us uh, in the giving of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary's cross what a remarkable thing it is that God should provide his son uh, as a person to take away our sin. What a gracious God we have. We, we often see gracious people in this world uh, and there will be times when we are very much amazed by the grace of people towards us and how they give us things and they're helpful. But then another day we'll find possibly that same person who was gracious on that occasion it maybe isn't so gracious on another occasion when we see them operating. But that's not the case for, for, from our God. Our God is a gracious God. He's always seeking to try and help us and to try and bring us back to himself. Now sometimes, of course, you'll notice the, the COVID thing that's been going on in this world. Not, none of us could have missed it. But, you know, God often speaks and tries to speak to us through tragic circumstances in order to get our attention. And so often... We're 
paying attention to other things and not paying attention to him at all. Uh, and so it's important that uh, we pay attention to these things and we understand that God may well be trying to speak to us through the circumstances of our lives. And a gracious God he is in uh, allowing us to, to live whilst he uh, tries to speak to us. Uh, and so, uh, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, says the, uh, says the, it's the scripture, the, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. And so the Lord Jesus brought grace into this world. The, the Lord Jesus shows the grace of God to us, uh, and he gives us what we require. You'll notice the next question then is, how much grace do we need? Well, every one of us needs grace in its extremity, in a sense, because we are at such a distance from God in our sin. Those of us who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour, and that, that means us all at some point in our lives, uh, some of us have trusted the Lord Jesus uh, and already, but some may, listening to this may not have trusted the Lord Jesus, and you still need to know and to be able to uh, enjoy and experience the grace of God in your life through salvation and through understanding that God is a God who loves you and desires to uh, bring you back to himself. Uh, God's love is remarkable, that he should love us in the way that he does, even when we pay no attention to him whatsoever. And so he does love us, uh, and yet he requires us to come to him in order to get his salvation. So I wonder today if you're the kind of person who has experienced the grace of God, has understood that his grace uh, was uh, brought into this world through the Lord Jesus uh, when he came into this world, and yet he went on to die. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was so visible, so blessed, so uh, beneficial uh, to everyone who trusts in him that we understand and we know the grace of God. And the grace of God is brought to us and we understand uh, our need of him. How much grace do you need? Uh, and of course the verse tells us that. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. You'll notice the distance that the Lord Jesus travelled. He was rich. The Bible tells us about his heavenly home. It tells us that he left heaven and everything that that uh, that he enjoyed there. He enjoyed the praise of angels. He uh, was ministered to by them uh, eternally. And yet, all of these beautiful places, the, the beautiful place of heaven, he left it behind where he was the highest person. And he left it behind to come down into this scene of time. He came with a desire to save men and women and boys and girls and he left heaven behind. He was rich, and yet for your sakes, says the scripture, he became poor. Uh, and you wonder to yourself, maybe, how poor did he become? Well, of course, we understand and we read from the scriptures that the Lord Jesus became and came into this world into one of the poorest families uh, in the land. He came into the, the family of Mary and Joseph, and Joseph was a carpenter, uh, and they were poor people. Uh, they didn't have a lot, and the Lord Jesus uh, had to uh, and enjoyed with the, with that family living in the, that family whilst he was here in this world, whilst he was a child, uh, and from the greatest, the highest place in heaven, to the poorest place on earth. And we know that as Scripture tells us, he had to ask people for things. He had to ask them to show him a penny, um, and. So he had nothing. He didn't uh, put store by the earth's riches. He had nothing. He could have been the richest king who ever came into the world, but he came and chose to be poor to show his grace and to show the grace of God to us. And so we wonder how much grace we needed. Well, we need all of the grace of God, and uh, we need it to its extent uh, to save us and to bless us. Uh, and I wonder if we need all of that grace, how much grace did he give? Uh, and it, the verse tells us that, that you through his poverty might be rich. And so he gave all of his 
riches in heaven and became poor that you and I might be rich. Not financially rich. We're not talking about the financial riches here. We're talking about not the knowledge of God as our Saviour and Lord. The knowledge of sins forgiven. The knowledge of a future home in heaven. These are great riches that people put very little store by in this world. But they're the greatest riches that anyone can be offered. We're not here to talk about uh, getting and gaining uh, riches from this world because it's all the riches of this world are all fading and they will all none of them will go with us when we leave this world um, uh, and all of us must die at some point says the scripture and that's of course not only scripture that would tell us that the experience of life tells us that that it comes to a time for all of us who will die and so the riches of this world are of no value but God gives us great riches, the riches that are found in Christ, great riches, the knowledge of sins forgiven, what a great rich riches that is, what a, a wonderful thing that is to know that our uh, sins are forgiven and we don't have a, a bill to pay with God, the, uh, our account with God is settled, what a, rich, what a great riches that is and how rich we feel in ourselves when that has happened. When we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour Savi and our sins are cancelled, the penalty of our sin will no longer be ours because the Lord Jesus took our penalty at Calvary's cross. Uh, and so it's been, it's a wonderful thing to think about this, the grace of God and th that great uh, unmerited favour of God. None of us uh, could come to God and say, well, you know, I I'm due your riches, I'm due your, your grace because of uh, the kind of life I've led if we come like that God won't listen to us we need to come with our sin and say look I know I'm a sinner I know I have need of God the Lord Jesus Christ as my saviour and I know that he is able to save me and he will give me salvation if I request if I ask for it in that way and so uh, today it's possible for you to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour it's possible for you to uh, have this grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, to experience it. And you know, when we get saved and trust the Lord Jesus, it's not the last we see of grace. Because we know his grace in our daily lives. We know his grace in everything that we do, working with us and helping us and blessing us on a daily basis. And so, if you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never experienced God's salvation, would you do that today? Trust the Lord Jesus Christ today. Thank you for listening.